All right, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to walk you all through how you can set up this Google Maps on your React or Next.js application. Uh, it's actually really easy if you haven't done it before, so stick around if you wanna learn. The functionality that we have in this app right now is that we have three places. Um, one of them is in the water, I need to fix that, but these are kind of representing like burger places. And if you click on one of these, it tells you the name of the restaurant and it tells you the address and you can kind of customize this to have whatever you want in it. And then also you can change the city. So if I type in like Brooklyn, that'll take me to a different location, you know, Queens, that'll take me over here. So let me show you how I did this in React. So it's kind of a lot of code. So I'll kind of like walk you through and give you like the most important pieces of this. So let's go down to the very bottom. This is the main component that we use um, where you can kind of give a style, you can give a starting position. Um, in this case, position is coming from state. So as we change the city, it'll change this position object and then it'll move the map around. You can also change the default zoom. Like for example, if I did like 10, uh, I would start zoomed out further. Okay, so like 13 or 12 might be a better zoom level for what we want. Cool. Now, where does this Google Map thing come from, right? So I'm importing a library called at react Google Maps slash API. Using this library, you can just use a couple of things and you can have this map basically working as I've been showing you. So let's go back down to the bottom. Um, so another important thing to talk about are the markers. I'm manually adding these markers in using some state that stores an array of places. So I loop over an array and for every place, I basically just render out a marker F. Um, I just recently ran into a bug. You have to use marker F when you're using like React 18 strict mode for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that's the approach there. And then I just basically position the marker over the latitude and a longitude of that place. And then when you click on the place, I keep track of what place that you have selected. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. In fact, if I go up, you'll see that place is just a array of places, which has three elements. So we have name, address, latitude, and longitude. And secondly, we have this info window. So when you click on a place, I'm setting some state to keep track of what place you have selected. You click on the same place again, it just untoggles that. And if we have a selected place defined, we're going to show an info window F, where again, you can position that over different places on your map. Um, you can give it some offset as well. So I'm kind of moving it up so it's not covering the actual marker. And then you can attach a click listener for when someone tries to close that panel. And then inside of this, you can customize it to have like whatever you want. So technically I could put like next links in here, I believe, so that if someone were to click this and they can click a link, that could take you to a new page in your app or take you to an external site. I'll take you to the real Google Maps if you wanted to. So that is kind of like the map functionality. Let's talk about the form and how like the form is basically able to take in a city and reposition the map over that city. Well, I should change that to New York City. So we have a form here. I'm using Formic in this example, um, but I'm guessing the, the logic would translate if you're using like React form hooks or whatever. But basically I am saying when someone submits the form, I'm looking up the lat long for the city. Okay, so there's a method up here, and that is hitting the Google Maps API and hitting the geocode endpoint to basically take the city, comma USA, convert it to a, a data structure, which has a results, it has geometry, it has location. I should probably type this, but I haven't gotten around to it. But as you can see, we basically get the lat long that comes back for the city that they typed in, and then we store that in state here and because the map down below is dependent on the state variable it'll basically just shift the entire map over to that new center location other than that the only other thing i can kind of point out is like in order to get this working you have to kind of inject some javascript code so there's a use js api loader which kind of injects some code into your app and then when that's done loading you can basically display that map uh, conditionally over here and say if is loading then show the map and then the last thing is you do have to set up a Google API key. So I went into Google, I set up an account, I added my credit card, and they give you back a key that you can set in your .env. And then that will basically connect you and allow you to authenticate against the Google um, 
Maps API here. As you can see, I'm attaching the key to all my requests. Now, the one thing I'm not too sure about is I'm not sure if this key should stay private. And if it does need to stay private, we should probably actually call a backend endpoint on our API. And that API could act as a proxy to hit the Google Maps API. Could be wrong, so leave a comment below if I'm wrong about that. I did see areas in the Google uh, dashboard, the Google Maps dashboard, to basically lock down requests and make sure that they only come for a certain um, domain. So if you were to deploy this to production, you had like example.com, I believe you can go and configure Google Maps to say, hey, do not allow traffic from anywhere else other than example.com. I think you can lock it down to IP as well. So if you wanted to do local development, I think you could technically like add in your IP address and then it would protect your key from being used by anyone else. But I think the easiest and safest thing would be just add a API proxy, honestly. And that also kind of like decouples your code from Google Maps API. It kind of creates one level of abstraction so that your UI doesn't know about Google Maps. Like technically this data could come from some other mapping system if you wanted to. But now that I think about it, this whole thing depends on Google. So maybe that's not a good idea. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed watching this little overview, be sure to give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and press the bell icon on like. And like always, I have a Discord you're welcome to join. The link is in the description below. If you would want to find a place to hang out with some other developers or ask questions, or if you want to send me a message, sometimes I'm on there to respond to questions. Other than that, yeah, have a good day. Happy coding.